Hi everyone, it's good to see you and most importantly, it's good to be seen. So today, I'm going to be covering something that I do periodically, not a lot, but I do periodically, and it's a very handy thing to know. What I find is that when you're in the wilderness, sometimes your little folding saw, or the, your laplander or, or whatever you've got, is just not quite up to the job of cutting the big logs or anything that just needs a bigger saw. So what I sometimes do, if I don't want to carry a bow saw, I generally just carry the blade. Um, and what I do is I, I get a blade, I put a couple of bolts in the end, and I'll show you what that's for later. And that's just a lot easier to carry. Now if I'm on a canoe trip, what you can do, excuse me a second, is you can fold them round, because these are very high tensile steel. So you fold them round like that, and they pretty much go into a cooking pot or anything that, you know, pretty much secures it for a trip. And I've done this many times. Okay, so when you're ready, when you're on a trip and you need your bow saw, you take it out, unfold it, because obviously it comes back to level, and then you just, we make a bow saw. So I will show you a couple of ways that I use to make a bow saw. Um, and and, 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 it, and it's, again, this is just good fun to do. Good thing is another bushcraft um, skill that is invaluable. So let's go cut some wood and I'll show you what I do. So I've cut some wood and I'm going to turn it into an H-frame bow saw. So what I need to work out is how long I want my handles. Right, so I've got two thicknesses here. Okay, so I'm, I'm probably going to go for the thicker bit for the handle. because It's nice to have something to grip hold of. So I'm going to sort of guess in, oh, I will probably want it about that long there. And then I'll get the same out of this one here. So I'm going to go there, I think. Okay, so that's my two handles. So that's going to be there. So all I need to do now is work out the piece for the middle, which I'm going to use this piece for, and then we're good to go. So what I do is I need the blade. What I normally do is I put him on the ground, like so, and you can work this out. Roughly, let's take the blade out of here. Being careful, obviously, because it's a new blade not to cut ourselves. Okay, pick the rubbish up, put it somewhere, we'll use that later. So I'm going to roughly guess that's going to go there, that's going to go there, I'm 
gets in from there to there. Actually, I'm going to use the thicker part, I think. So I'm going to go from there to there. I'd say roughly about there. So what I want to do then is I'm going to get my knife and I'm just going to split them out a bit so I can put the blade in. So I'm just going to split them down there. Okay, so here we go. Then I'm going to split these. Take my trusty knife. Put, let me put it out of somewhere safe. And what I want to do, like I said, I want to just take the end. Being sure I don't obviously cut myself, so I want to get it smack bang in the middle. Okay, I'm just gonna take one of these as a little batten. Because we all know how to make a batten now. If you've watched my video, you wanted to do that as well as. So I'm gonna split that down there. And obviously, if I go too far, that's just gonna split the wood completely down, and obviously I don't want that. So I've got my split in one. Okay. That's pretty far enough. Like I said, if I go too mad, that's just going to split right out, and I don't want that to happen. I don't mind a little split in it, but. Okay, then, so. I want to take my two bolts. I only want one on each end. Actually, I'll leave that one there. Uh, actually, I missed it. Yeah, so, so, so I'll take this one out. Stick that in there. So, you, you don't have to use two of these uh, nut and bolt, you could use a piece of wire or anything to stop it sort of slipping through. So, right, that goes in there, like so. goes in there like so we're just putting it together so we just sort of roughly know where we are with it okay so we want the piece that we had in the middle which was not that piece unless I've misjudged the length no it was that piece there okay so you can probably see what's happening here and all we're going to do, we're going to put a piece of string along there and then we're going to put a uh, little doggle on it, i.e. piece of wood and then we're just going to tighten her up and she should be good to go. So I'll just get some string. Okay, so take your paracord because obviously everybody's got paracord in their rucksack just in case. All I'm going to do is I'm going to do my trusty slip knot. Again, if you've seen the videos you'll know what to do. So, I mean, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put it together now, and then what I'm gonna do at the end, I can uh, just slightly tweak it. I mean, I'm probably gonna shave a little bit off of there, so these sit a little bit better. I could put some holes around here so that the rope sits a bit better. But all, of this, but all I wanna do now is just put this on here Pull that tight, put that around there, okay, and I've got to tie that off around here, so I'm going to give myself a little bit, and then I'll cut it. Give myself enough to cut there. I 
doesn't matter how you tie this off just tie it off with any sort of knot that you can use to make just sure it's tight and it's not going to come undone I'm just doing a granny knot I guess I've got to call it okay so that's on there all I need now is my st I need a stick and the stick has got to be enough so it can lean on that there so that's probably a bit thick so hey ho we've got one here so I want about there so I want it to be about there I want it to be about that long so I'm gonna cut it right where this is and if it's too long again you can trim it up let's put this away so we don't lose it Wow, trees just falling down. Amazing. Happens. Right, so what I want to do then is I want to start just turning this. Okay, start turning this, start curling it round, start curling it round until it starts to get tight to the point I cannot move it anymore. I like to have one end slightly longer because obviously I want it to go on there. What's vitally important is trying to keep these level because what tends to want to happen is that these tend to want to slip round. So just be aware of that. Okay, it's getting quite tight. Okay, let's just see what we've got now. Okay, being careful. Okay. See what I mean? You've got this, it's a crude saw. Okay. What I could do is I could just take my knife and just shave them flat so that can sit flatter. Shave that flat so that can sit. Because don't forget, this is under tension. Right, and this is not going to move, right? I could tighten it up a bit more, of course you can. You can pull these right out, but you can see sometimes if you get it wrong, the ends here, for some unknown reason, well, it's, look, there you can see, you can see that started to twist round there. Always happens, don't know why. I mean, you can try and twist that back if you like, but that doesn't affect the saw in any way. All you don't want to do is make sure that it doesn't pop out. What you can do, is that you can put paracord around here and then wrap it around there and that literally locks that in place there okay so just to sort of prove that it works okay and you can do this you can judge to see how tight the blade is I don't want to cut my hands, obviously. I think the blade needs just to be a little bit tighter. You can see why you need thick poles, because you don't want them bending. Okay. okay then, see that's quite tight now. Let's give that another go. better I mean you could use slightly thinner wood I mean I think it'd be better off if it was that side both sides but there you go it's a bit over ambitious but it, that is quite solid yeah it's not gonna go anywhere but obviously if you chuck that around this is gonna pop out and it's just gonna 
you know, just fall to bits because obviously that's under tension. So obviously care must be taken when you're using this. But again, you know, flatten those there, that sit flatter. Take your knife, sit those flatter. That'll be a lot securer because obviously at the moment, as you can see, there's a round bit there. I might just do that to finish it off and I'll come back and I'll show you. But that is all you need. See, now I've got a bow saw. Okay, so I've made some refinements. I've taken out, just shaved off a little bit of wood there so that sits flat. There, look. Okay, and I've shaved off a bit of wood there. Obviously, it sits flat. Um, I've tightened this up as much as I dare tie it because don't forget that tension is pushing on that, which is technically the only reason this is holding together is because it's on the tension itself. So if you go too mad, like I said, unless you want to tie some paracord around there, then around there, then that locks that in. But as a general rule, I've never really had one of these pop out of as yet, saying that it could at some point, because don't forget, this is under super tension. But we're going to give it a try. Like I said, I've never had one pop out on me yet. There's always a first. Let's give it a go. moving everywhere. Okay, so that's pretty much cut that. I'm okay, it's a little bit rotten, but I mean, just that's just a general idea. A lot of the stuff in here is pretty well rotten, unless I find a good piece of dead standing. So that just gives you a rough idea what you can do with one of these. It doesn't take much of the imagination. So that is it really. That's the first one and I will show you another one. So here we go. Okay, so we've got our blade, taken our blade out and we're gonna make a second saw. So what I need to do is I need to measure with a piece of paracord, roughly how big our piece of wood needs to be. So I'm just shaping where the wood might be. I can, it's, obviously it's better to have it too long than too short. So I'm gonna sort of go there, pull that bit tighter, about there. Okay, about there, about there. So I reckon we need to be about that long. Okay, so that's probably one and a half, yeah, about one and a half times the size of the blade. So I'm gonna put the blade there so I don't lose it. Okay, so if I tie a knot, because I don't want to cut my cordage, I just want to use it as a measuring stick. So, I want that side, I want the shortest side. Let's go see what we can find. Okay, so what I've got here then, is I've got a long stave, which I know is way too long, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start bending it round. Yeah, because I wanna get a shape, so like a bow shawl shape, but I need to start bending the fibers and obviously not all of it wants to bend, like that's quite thick there. So this is the quite flexy bit. So I'm just gonna work that round like so. I mean, this should probably be a funny shape bow saw. Okay, so that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna cut that and then put the blade in and see what we got should keep it under tension so even though i've measured this you can always re-measure it by holding this here and putting that on there i want it under tension so i'm going to sort of probably cut it about there Give it a go. Is 
Did it work, Tiger? Sounds of spring, eh? Okay, so I've got to put a couple of notches like we did on the other one so the blade can go in. But I've got to be very aware how I'm bending it so they obviously they line up. So seeing that it wants to bend that way, I've got to put my notches in that way. So I'll just get my blade. So I reckon about there. Need a button. Try and get it in the middle, try and get it where I need it. Just want to start the split off like so. Okay. Looking where the other one is, about so. Okay, what I want to do first then is I want to try and put my blade in because I want to bend it round to the blade. It's a bit like doing the old bowstring a little bit. So I've got that in there. down below the wood okay so I've got one end in the end there so we put that through and then we've got to get this to the other end now if anybody's ever put a bowstring on and this literally you put your foot behind that there okay and you literally bend this round but don't forget this is probably wants to twist so we're gonna gonna Oh, you can hear the snapping. Just need that to go in there. A bit more. Okay, and that is it. That's all you have to do, he says. I'm gonna bang that in there a little bit more. Because it looks like it wants to pop out, which it does look. So again, be aware that this stuff is under tension. See how it's bending there? That's only because uh, it's twisting out of alignment. Okay, so that's a real crude bow saw. But, okay, it's not as tight as the other one. Okay, you can get a tighter one of these. Okay, a lot thicker. So let's go and give it a go. Okay, so as you can see, the, the blade is twisted there. It's only because that's twisted as I've bent it round, the holes are out of alignment. You can perfect it. I would probably say cut the stick a little bit longer, maybe twice, maybe twice the length of the blade. Um, but as you can see, it is quite crude. It isn't as nice as the other one. And you just gotta watch out that this obviously end doesn't puff out on this side. I could, should push that in a bit further. And that, because it's under tension that way, it's not really gonna go anywhere. So, but I've used these saws many times and they've, just to cut firewood, I know that's soft, but just to cut si just to cut firewood, they do quite well. But okay, I get the, the safety element is that everything is under tension, so just be aware of that. So, that's another crude saw. So you can choose what one, you know, you, 
you prefer. This one's probably a lot quicker than the other one, but I prefer the other one because it just looks a lot more stylish and it's just a little bit more crafty, I suppose. But that's it really. I mean, there's more than one way to do this and obviously there are several ways to make different bow saws, but these are just two of many ideas that I have or have used in the past. And in a tight spot, they can get you out of trouble if you need a bigger saw to do a bigger job. So with that said, I hope you liked it. Like, subscribe and all that, uh, the usual stuff. And I will, yeah, dog barking. So uh, like, subscribe, and I will catch up with you again. So get out there and do some bushcraft and be super, super careful. Because like I said, everything here is under tension. So just be aware of that. Thank you and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.